Coming up on Hands on Mac, let's take a look at iMessage contact key verification. Stay tuned. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This This is Twit. back to Hands on Mac. I am Micah Sargent, and today we are taking a look at a new feature of iOS 17.4 called iMessage Contact Key Verification. This feature provides some more security for you and the person to whom you are speaking. It is a way to take things a step further from the end-to-end encryption that Apple does on uh, in iMessage conversations to make sure that you are indeed communicating with the person who you expect to be on the other end. So when there are sophisticated threats against iMessage servers, when there are sophisticated bad actors, uh, there may be chances that a person to whom you are expecting to speak is not in indeed that person. With iMessage contact key verification in place, this helps to make sure that it is who you want to be talking to. Now, it's very easy to uh, set up iMessage contact key verification. And so I'm going to show you that uh, on this iPad. So we'll head over to iPad OS. And here, uh, it's as simple as launching the settings app, tapping on your Apple ID banner in the top left corner, scrolling down to the bottom, choosing contact key verification, and then toggling it on. Now, uh, contact key verification is only available for certain devices. You can use it on an iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Mac, or Apple Vision Pro, but you need to have iOS 17.2 or later, iPad OS 17.2 or later, Watch OS 10.2 or later, Mac OS 14.2 or later, and Vision OS 1.1 or later in order to use it. All of those devices need to be signed into iMessage with your Apple ID. They need to be signed into both iCloud and iMessage with the same Apple ID. They need to have iCloud keychain turned on on all of the devices. They need to have two-factor authentication turned on for you. You need to have two-factor authentication turned on for your Apple ID, and you need to have a passcode or password set for all of your devices. If any of those are untrue, you will not be able to turn on iMessage contact key verification. Also, if you are using a managed Apple ID, like one for uh, an education or a company, that's also a case where this will not work. And when you try to toggle on verification in iMessage, if any of the devices that are logged into your Apple ID do not meet these criteria, you will be prompted to either remove them from your iCloud account or to update those devices. So I will tap the button to toggle this on and up will pop a little prompt talking about contact key verification. I have the option to continue or set up later. I will choose continue, which will then turn this feature on. Now, there are two ways to go about uh, verifying contacts with iMessage contact key verification. There's on device comparison and public verification code. Basically, when you are doing, uh, when you are having an iMessage with another person, iMessage conversation with another person, uh, iMessage is going to automatically look to see if you and your contact have iMessage verification turned on and will automatically check to see if the person has it turned on and if it can verify that you are talking to whom you expect to be talking. Now, like aside from that, you know, if you uh, use this back and forth, once that's been verified, then it'll happen automatically. But you do need to uh, kind of kick off the verification process. There's the on device option, which is where you and the person sort of uh, go to verify the contacts and a code is generated that each of you will look at, share and compare. Then there's a public verification code. With this, you can share a public verification code with the world that is meant to be a way to confirm that you are you. So I can share that code on social media, and when people who have my iMessage information reach out to me, they can verify that I am me. So on this iPad, I am going to choose show public verification code. This doesn't have to be blurred out or anything like that. You all can see this code. That's because this is meant to be shown publicly. You need to be able to see this code, and then you can use that to confirm that the person is who you expect. I have the option to copy that verification code and then share it publicly. Now, let's talk about 
what it looks like to actually uh, go about com comparing and confirming codes. So I have an iMessage conversation with my actual account. Uh, so this, of course, is the uh, Micah Twit account, and I have the other account as well. And so these two work together uh, to be able to message back and forth, right? And I want to make sure that it does indeed uh, mean that I am speaking with Micah Twit on the other end of the line. So we'll switch to uh, the view of both devices and you can see that uh, this iPhone is my personal iPhone and I'm currently having a conversation with Micah Twit, which is the iPad, okay? So the iPhone is me, actually me, the iPad is my work account. What you do is you open up messages and you tap on the message thread, then you tap on the name to view the conversation details. From there, I will see information, including uh, stop sharing my location if that information is available, links that I have sent, and other information. At the bottom is an option that says verify contact. Now I tap this, and this will uh, pop up a, a portion of the screen that says verify contact. Now it says to generate a code, Micah must have verify contact open for, their, for this conversation on their device. So I will tap on the iPad and do the same thing. Scroll down and choose verify contact. Now that they both have popped up, I can see that the public verification codes are available but more importantly, that the contact verification codes match. And they're not showing on the screen, which is great, but I can see them and I can see that the verification codes match. They're eight digit codes. And I will choose mark as verified on one device and mark as verified on the other device, which will then put the verification code into the contacts app. I will choose update and I will choose update and now that information is available on both. And as you can see, if you're watching, if you're listening down at the bottom, I see a section that says advanced message security. It shows the name of the contact and it shows verified next to it. Now I know that these contacts are verified and look at this up in the top. Again, if you're uh, watching, you can see this. If not, if you're listening, um, you would see up in the top a little check bar, a check mark next to the person's contact because those two contacts have been verified. That is how you do it if you are doing it personally, manually. If you want to do a public verification code, then you will do this. You will uh, go into the iMessage conversation, you'll select their name, and then you will choose info and select edit. Then at the bottom in the verification code field, you will type or paste the public verification code that your contact shared. And if you don't see it, you can uh, choose to add it by hitting the more button. But if their public verification code matches and is verified by iMessage contact key verification, then boop, a check mark will appear next to their name in the iMessage conversation. If the code doesn't match the code that's stored on Apple's servers or isn't verified, then a check mark won't show. Now, that is an opportunity to say, okay, I'm not speaking to the person to whom I expect to, I expect, so I should not continue to have a conversation with them. So this is great if you aren't able to be right next to the person as you saw with the way that we did it. If it's someone across the world, uh, being able to get that public verification code, uh, put that in and see that check mark appear, that's how you know that they are indeed who you expect. Once that's been done, then your verification is complete and you are able to know for sure that you are speaking to the that person on the other end of the line. Now, Apple does make it clear that this is not designed to prevent fraud. It's not designed to prevent phishing or text message based scams because that's a whole different thing. This is simply to make sure that I, Micah Sargent, who you know has, for example, a public X account, who has had this account forever, who shares their public verification code on that account, uh, is the person that you are communicating with over iMessage, as opposed to someone creating a fake iMessage account like Micah Twit and messaging you from that, pretending to be me. It's one more layer of security on top of the already secure end-to-end -end encryption that is provided by Apple.
Uh, folks, thank you for tuning in to this episode of Hands on Mac. Uh, I hope that you are able to make use of this feature. I should mention, you can always toggle off iMessage contact key verification by going right back to that page that we showed at the very beginning. Uh, in your settings, you tap on your, um, your Apple ID banner in the top, and then you simply scroll down and uh, tap on contact key verification and turn it off if you don't want to have it on anymore. But as long as it's on, and as long as you have made those comparisons, you are very uh, well set to know that the people, again, to whom you're speaking, are the people that you expect them to be. Uh, thanks so much, and I appreciate your support. I will be back next week with another episode of Hands on Mac. Until then, email me, micah at twit.tv, if you have topics you'd like to see me cover. Bye-bye. Bye.